to documentation. So what I do presently at Zares K Smarts, I I handle the dev portal, developers portal, um, where developers go to check our APIs and um, yeah, use our tools to build the, their product. So we use Jekyll at RSK, and that's why I thought to share um, how to get started with Jekyll in this meetup. Thank you, um, Ride the Docs Nigeria, for um, the opportunity to speak on building a doc site with Magdan and Jekyll. And also, I'm the founder of Techrity, which is a, Techrity is an, a nonprofit which is aimed at kickstarting people into tech careers by providing the vital resources they need, such as laptop, data, and mentorship. So the, the um, whole essence of this um, topic is to let technical writers know that um, it's not all about writing articles um, and publishing on Medium, Dev.io, um, National, um, Hakanon, but in case you are told to take a much higher position, um, um, like what I do, technical content developer, in case you are also told to, um, in case you want to move into other fields in technical writing, like um, API documentation, you will need to know how to use these tools, um, doc tools um, to, to start an, um, an API, to start a documentation site. So those are what, those are other things um, um, in the, in the field, in the career that most people don't know about, and they think they might think it's all about writing technical articles. Technical articles is part of it, um, but there are such there are other um, there are other stuff like um, editing, like API writing, and and so on. Using tools, uh, there is read the docs tools. There is um, Jekyll um, static site builder. There is MK docs. So there are so many of those things and. It's necessary for you um, as a technical writer to also have an idea of all um, what they do, how to generate the site. So in case you are told to um, handle a, doc a documentation portal um, for developers, you will know how to um, to maneuver your way in it. So yeah, next slide, please. So that's it for my background and um, I'll be talking on what is Markdown um, today and what is JQ. Markdown is a markup language, um, just like HTML, and it's used to format elements to plain text documents, um, just as we know that uh, HTML do. The difference between Markdown is that um, with Markdown, you don't need, um, you can easily use your notes app, you can use any app, any application, any editing application to open Markdown, which is not like the the HTML and other markup languages. But with Markdown, it's easily possible across all um, across all applications. Um, Markdown has a specific um, way of um, formatting um, text, so it's a text. It's um, it format text in Markdown differently. Dif um, the way you format a link in HTML is different from the way you format a a, a link in Markdown. So that's what we'll be looking at. And um, the file format for a Markdown is .md or, the, or .markdown, as you will see when we get to the Jekyll part. Yeah, so the overall design for goal for um, Markdown's formatting syntax is to make reading as much as possible, is, is to make text as readable as possible, sorry. The idea is that a Markdown formatted document should be polishable as plain text without looking like it's been marked up with tags or formatting instruction. So it's very simple. Markdown is very simple. And most of us might have come across it, especially when we deal with GitHub and um, our readme. So it's a very important um, tool to have under our belt because it's used by um, Medium. It's used in all sites where we publish um, um, our articles as um, technical writers. So doc, uh, Markdown is just a simple text, um, a text markup language that enables us to easily um, write text um, documents, pass our documents. You don't need to worry about the application you're using to open the document. Like for example, HTML, you have to um, open the HTML in a 
in VS Code or in um, in a text editor. But with Mac, with MD, with .md Markdown, you can open it in on any application. You can open .md on on um, your editor, your text editor. You can open it on your notes app. So that's how that's the whole difference between his, um, the MD um, the MD formatting uh, markup language and all other markup languages there there are. So why do you need to use Markdown? It um, can be used for everything, like I said. You can use Markdown in your notes app. You can use Markdown in your text editor. You can use Markdown in your sites, in your to build your sites. You can use Markdown in your uh, Medium application, in your Medium web, um, as, in your, as a tool on Medium. You can use it as a tool on dev.to. Markdown is portable, uh, meaning that it's very um, lightweight and it can be it can be used to create websites. It can be used to create documents, notes, books, presentation, and what name you. So it can be open on any application, like I said. And um, if you decide you don't like the Markdown application you are currently using, you can import your Markdown files into another Markdown application. Yeah, that's how it. That's how simple it is. Some um, if we look, if we if we remember the um, there's there was a time with Microsoft Word. I think Microsoft. PowerPoint or thereabouts. Um, if you if you don't have if you don't open that particular that particular document with the same version, you notice that you can open it elsewhere on a, in on a higher version. So, but with the Markdown application, you can take your .md file and uh, move it to um, any any application. It doesn't worry about versioning. You don't need to worry about um, your your text application getting uh, mixed up or, or thereabouts. So that's the whole difference between the Markdown, um, why we need to know Markdown and why it's used for used as a tool for technical writers. So the best way to get started with Markdown is to use it. It's the best way to get started with Markdown is to use it. And um, how do you use it? You, for, you can use your text editor, um, your um, uh, VS Code. You can use any text editor. You can use um, the online tools uh, for markdown formatting um, the one i used the one i use is hackmd.io h a c k m d.io you can use dilinga so we are going to practice with hackmd.io um, we are going to practice the markdown syntax with hackmd.io so um, let me share my screen let me share my screen okay let me know when you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to hackmv.io and um, we're going to just do a, at least a two minutes, um, a two minutes, this um, preparatory or a practice session with Markdown on HackMD. So this is the HackMD, um, this is the HackMD tool that enables us to write Markdown and see what we are writing. So it's very good. I'll suggest you guys um, use it, um, especially if you are writing, um, your, if you are writing your, doc, your documentation or you want to see how your application will look apart from writing it in um, VS Code. So for Markdown, to do, a, to do an H1 um, text, to do a title text, you do H1, it's H1. Remember H1, it's H1 in HTML. But with Markdown, you use an ash and you do building a doc site with HTML. So this is um, the Markdown H1 um, H1 tag, which is the ash. Then for H2, you do a second um, you do a second ash, which is two ashes, and you get the H2 tag. So um, for the H3 you do three hatches and four hatches and, and stuff and stuff. So let's go to the next, um, doing a title. So for for a link, for doing um, a link, example, oh, yeah. the, the HTML, for HTML, you use, um, you use A for linking, um, um, for linking nodes or linking files, but with, with um, HackMD, you can use your, this one, sorry, um, exclamation, you open your brackets, 
and you do a um, you open your parenthesis and you put your bracket after it and you put your file your file parts. So in the, you got a big pussy bitch. Uh. In the bra in the brackets you do you use um uh, let me just put uh, the name the title of the image maybe my <laughs> profile picture. shut up my profile picture and um once you do that you put the link to the profile picture so with markdown it's easier because you can just go to those um icon where you do insert image and let me just insert any image from my from my downloads folder and you can see the image um so let me just name this hot but that's so for the hot that's the text that's the title of the of your image that's your title of your image with with the html one we, we have a we have to put in the title and stuff so that's your that's the hot part then for, the, for that's for links so link what's the next so this okay sorry that's for images for links we do we use the old lady parenthesis and we can put a link to any, any, any article like let me look for a link to this I think one. I got your puppy okay. in my blood. let me look the links to that one okay Shut yeah. up. Oh, yes, so, so this is me attaching a link to the to the um my company's um, developer portal so if you look at it it's Shut already formatted up. for me and shows me so if i click on this one Please i can go up. to i can go to um the oh, cool, cool, cool. next one so i can go to the website so that's what markdown does for you it helps to format it has a different way of formatting text and it's very easy and um once you know the basic um h1 h2 um using ashes for your titles using links using images doing tables it's marked down you are set to go so that's it for for the um, preparatory on um, markdown so let's move over to jekyll um jekyll is a static um site builder and um let's so how many of us have the link to the repo? I, um, I think Rufai will post the link to the repo. So I've already created a, a repo for us to work with, a repo, um, a Jekyll repo. So please go look on the chat. I think the screen, the, so the link is on the chat. Um, go to that repo and clone the repo. Um, let me just, let me just do that. So let me do that in this session now. Let me do the, Practice. So this is me going to the repo that I created for the Jekyll. So what does Jekyll do? Um, Jekyll is a is a uses Markdown to render blog posts or documentation sites. So what Jekyll does is Jekyll renders your Markdown into HTML. So you don't need to bother about HTML writing your um your documentation with HTML. You you can write Jekyll. What Jekyll does for you is to write your you, you can write your documentation in Markdown and it automatically gets formatted into HTML. So it converts your text files into HTML, um, uh, which is called text transformation. So Jekyll actually does more like magic, like templating, pagination, syntax oh, highlighting. Yeah. So what, it's, what syntax highlighting means is the game? Um, when you put your code, when you put the three back ticks and you want to enter your code, you can easily attach a title to that okay, three back ticks and it real real automatically right formats it for you. So let's let's you go over to that. the preparatory you look very practice fine session. Right so please let's clone the <laughs> let's clone the repo and I'll I'll go over the I'll go over the practice now. So um okay, so this is the I think this is the repository. I'm popping the repository now, and I'm opening my, I'm opening my Marching, terminal. Yeah, thank you. So git clone. This is git clone the terminal. Who's doing the thing? No. 
What? It's the one that remains you. No, it's not. Hello? Yes, it is. And I can't post it because he's on my phone. They're gonna kick me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay. Sorry for the disturbance. Okay. I think. So this is. Um, Try it one more I'm time. Cloning my repository. Now. Maybe that was wrong. This is a good song. Is there a way we can we can kick them out of the meeting, please? Please look for a way to kick them out of the meeting. It's spam. It's spamming the whole. Well, they like I don't see any music. I don't know. I don't know why the admin is finding it so hard to kick them out. I was the one that kicked out the first guy. Please, if you're finding it hard, just shut up. Make no, sure mute me. me. Dumb person. Hey, I like the song. Don't pause it. Please let's hold on. Why they sort it out? Um, it's only. Hello, are we ready now? Yes, please continue. Thanks. Okay, so um, my battery will soon go off. So let me just do the. the so this is um, Git cloning the the repo I created. Like it's shown in the chat. Please, Rofai, drop the link in the chat. So I'm cloning it now, as you can see on my screen. So it's been cloned. So I'll cd into write the docs Nigeria. Nigeria. So let me open this um, this repo in my VS Code. So what I did was um, um, I I went to the documentation for Jekyll. I followed the documentation. If you go to Jekyll documentation site, which is here, um, you have Quick Start, the step by step tutorial. So what they have for the Quick Start um, step by step tutorial is a blog a blog site. So you will be the one to um, to organize it and put your headers, you put your left navigation for proper um, content to um, easily format your content. You have your header. So if you put a step by tutorial on JQ, it's there. You have to prepare your environment, like in the documentation, set up your environment. So um, there are basic things you have to set up in your environment, which is Ruby, and you see that in the in the readme on the repo. So let me just go ahead and do the preparatory, then we can go over to the repo and look at what we want to do, look at all the setup that needs to be done. So this is the file, um, this is the repo, sorry, I've opened it on my VS code. And um, this is the structure for the Jekyll docs. So if I, if I open this, um, let me run. Let me run this file. Let me run this repo. So with JQ, you can run the repo by using JQ serve as it's shown on the shown on the README. So I've already done the README setting up the environment instruction in the README. So you can clone it and see everything that needs to be done. So what we have to do now is to start this serve uh, this repo. Um, sudo gem install bundler. So go to sudo gem install bundler, install the bundler. As you can see, it's successfully installed. I'm going to the next instruction, which is bundle update. Bundle update. So I'm installing the bundle. Um, so just go over this when you clone the repo. Then now I can do the final one, which is bundle install. So I've installed everything that needs to be installed. Then now I can now go to um, my um, I start the repository, the local documentation on my local host, the documentation on my local host. So with with Jekyll, you can you use bundle exec Jekyll serve to start the site on localhost. So it's my site is running now. 
And um, if I go to localhost 4000, as you can see on the screen, I will see the site running. So the site, this site has already been hosted on Netlify. So the link to the site will be on the chat. So I, what you can see now is the basic site I did for the docs. So for with all with documentation, you know, we have the left navigation, we have a header, we have the left navigation, we have our content on the right side, and we have our footer. So I was not able to get that done because of time. But if you face any challenge, you can you can go over the documentation on JQ. And if you face any challenge, you can reach out to me. So with JQ, there are basic structures that you need to understand, which is the includes, which is the includes the layouts, a permalink. So please go over the directory structure to better understand JQ. You need the documentation so that you don't face any, you don't um, waste time on a particular problem. So please, um, whenever dealing with JQ, please uh, endeavor to go over the directory structure, um, go over the terms include. So which includes, what includes does for you is, which includes everything that your header, your footer has to be in the include um, file and you will see how to, um, install out to insert your includes in your um, .html file. So those are the basic, this is the structure of what I've, of the repo I did. We have the default .html where you have your um, basic HTML um, site. So this is what we are seeing here. So this is what we are seeing here on this part on build a documentation site with Magdan and Jekyll about the author and um, with Jekyll, we have layouts. So in your layout is what determines where your page should go to. So in your index.markdown, we have the layout home. This is already done by um, Jekyll, layout home. And if I happen to remove this home and set another layout, my site will change. So these are what you have to go through in the and check in the documentation so that you don't face any, you don't face any, so if you look at my screen, my because I removed the layout from home, which is the pre-built site for Jekyll, um, my, my content is no longer there. So if you go to the documentation, Jekyll asks you to create another home file. My battery is going down, sorry. Jekyll asks you to create another home file in your root folder, and um, you will be able to redo your whole site. So now this is just a basic, this is just a basic, um, this is just a basic documentation, just like similar to a blog post, a blog site, sorry. But when you when you are able to um, go over the docs, you can easily uh, align your content. You can have your left navigation, you can have your right navigation, and you can do a header. So let me give you an example of a site. My company site was built with um, um, Jekyll, like I said. So if I go to my company's website, you are going to see you're going to see the structure. So this underneath, this is this was built with Jekyll. And you have seen that everything has been arranged, the header, the filter, and um, every other thing. So this is not what you this is not the only stuff you can do with Jekyll. Like I said, you can now format your content and make it look as you want to do. But as we all know, it's a static site, so you cannot do any, you cannot have any interaction. Uh, interactions with it, except you want to, um, there are some basic plugins that can be inserted in Jekyll for you to make it more interactive. But basically on the on the background, it's a static documentation site. So this site, ARS, developers.rsk.co was built with um, Jekyll and Markdown. And uh, you can see the left navigation similar to your documentation, how you see it in other documentation portals. So this is the home and every other thing. So please, if you face any challenge while starting your project, please reach out to me. I think I'm going to stop here and switch over my system because my battery is low. So please, um, that's what Jekyll does for you. So please, let's, if um, anyone cloning the system and you are facing any challenge with setting up your environment with Ruby, have created um, a medium post. There's a medium post I created that will help you to um, that can help you to install Ruby and Ruby version manager. So with Jekyll, you need a particular version of Ruby. You need a particular version of Ruby to kick start it. So let me just share those. You can share this file with you. 
this link. Okay, so how to install Ruby? So if you're having problems setting up your environment, you can use this link. You can use this link uh, to see how you can easily set up your set up your environment for Ruby, and you can get the Jekyll documentation um, static site builder up and running. So please, if you have questions, please let's ask. Thank you, Amakere, for for the session and for the demo. You can switch your system now while while I hold down the session for you, or you can just continue. So thank you, thank you. Let me switch uh, now. Okay, so I will just summarize what the conversation and the delivery of the today's topic has been. So today's topic, she started with talking about markdowns and she said markdown is a markup language just like we have html and similar tools so the difference is in html you use it to build straight websites but markdowns allow are uh, flexible they are portable in that they can allow you to to do simple documentations just if you want to keep a note, you can use Markdown. If you want to build a website, you can use Markdown. If you want to create a website, you can use Markdown. One funny thing is if you have used, if you have used GitHub, or if you use GitHub a lot, you will realize that GitHub uses Markdown in all, in all their readmates to allow people to be able to share information about that project. So, that is one way where we use Markdown. In today's session, we now delved into Jekyll. And what is Jekyll? Jekyll is a, is a site generation tool. You use it to okay. generate the verse. Okay, you're welcome. I am here now, yeah. So okay. please, if um, you have... Question. I'm just summarizing your conversation. Okay. Then okay. I will have a question. I actually have a question for you that I will, I will drop now. So, okay. JQ is a site generation tool and is a static site generation tool. The first time I, I heard of JQ was when I was trying to create my own personal website, like a portfolio website. And GitHub, the they had a tool called GitHub Pages that allow you to build your website on GitHub Pages. So, and one of the two that they allowed to use them was JQ. So my first question to the speaker now is this. During that time and currently now, I don't know if it has changed. I know that JQ is based on Ruby and mm -hmm. you have mentioned how to set up Ruby. Now, I, if I use a Windows system, Ruby doesn't work really well with Windows system. Is that still the case? Is can Windows users, how do they work around setting up JQ on their system to be able to build, to be able to generate their site? Is that still, is yes. there a solution to that? Yes, there is. Um, let me send a link um, to that for yeah. Windows users. Um, I have the link somewhere to be able to install Ruby. You can restore Ruby on your system for Windows. Um, let me just look for that. Let me look for that, that link. So please go ahead while I'm looking for the link for to install Ruby for Windows users. Hello. 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 Sorry, so, uh, I went I off. I was just interrupted. So while I'm while I'm looking for the link for Windows users to install Ruby, um, 
please let's go ahead with the questions okay so um the second question i would like to ask you is well are there alternatives i don't want to use jq maybe ruby is uh is giving me serious issues on windows or mac are there any other are there any possible alternatives to jq Yes. Or what does JQ do that? Read the docs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we the there are various um, static sites builders. Um, we can use um like you mentioned the GitHub pages. We can use um MK docs. We can use um read the docs. Read the docs. Dot i r e a d t h e d o c s and there are several other of them. Um, maybe um, you can look at the one that's um, easy for you to set up. But um, Jekyll, um, like I said, the important, the selling point with Jekyll it has pagination. You can get your web page. You can um, you can highlight your your code. So what is syntax highlighting? Syntax highlighting means that if I use the three backticks um, to insert, for example, how we insert a code in Medium. If I use the three backticks, I will be able to use the three backticks with title. So, so merely after my three backtick, I can put um, um the language of the code. So if I'm if I'm if I if I want to publish a code in JavaScript and I know the code is JavaScript, I can use the three backticks and put JavaScript JavaScript after the three backticks. So JQ immediately recognizes that code, um, that code and knows that it's JavaScript and it immediately formats it for you to um Syntax, it highlights the syntax. For example, it can highlight um, so um, a file.js. It can show you the file in red and stuff. So that this is what Jekyll does, pagination, syntax highlighting, converting your markdown into, into HTML automatically. Yeah. Thank you for answering that question. So now, um, in using Markdown, because Jekyll is heavily based on Markdowns, right? Yes. Okay, so, and it means that in using is, um, if you are building a normal, uh, let me not say normal, if you are building a site with HTML, right, it's extendable, you can, you can find a way to inject JavaScript into it and stuff like that. Is there that kind of option in Markdown where you, can you extend it, can you, find new ways to maybe do a drop down how do you do that how do you make it interactive that's make for it, jq yes jq using markdown okay in your in your um you mean in your site okay yes so in your, in your, site. your site so the 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 formatting you use you use dot md so uh, like i said you use dot md then um Remember, drop for drop downs, similar to a drop down. Uh, let me just, I think this is like, okay. So let me just give an example. While we can wait for, okay, yes, I can see your screen. So, with I'm not on my other system. That's where I put um. That's where I put. That's where I would have been able to explain um. Um, the I would have would have gone through the code to explain the drop down. So you see how the site is structured with the drop down. Um, not really a drop down, but um, this. So with with Markdown, we know Markdown is limited in that with Markdown, you cannot do, um, you can't do um, drop downs. What you can basically do is um, have your, have your, what do they call that in Microsoft Word? Like have your dots, like dash, once you put, okay, let me use hackmd.io to explain. A list, a list, are you a talking list, about a list? Exactly. Okay. Exactly, exactly a list. So with um with Markdown, you can only do a list. 
that's what Magdan allows you to do. So this is a separate system and I'm not really set up here. So, so with, Mag, with Markdown, you can't, you can't do more than a list. You don't have any option to do a checkbox. You don't have any option to, to do um, advanced stuff that HTML does. So you, you can make use of basic um, tools, basic um, features that Markdown has. For example, this um, with, on my company's documentation size, as you can see, you can, you can have a, a card, like uh, you can have a card, you can have your left navigation and direct your, um, basically develop your content, um, structure your content rather. And uh, you can do some other ones. So this was done with HTML. The header, as you can see, this was done with HTML. This left navigation was done with HTML. Then basic documentation. Let me open a documentation for you. So this is a documentation. And this, this is, these are the basic things you can actually do. Like I said, the list, you can see a table of contents, MVP and blah, blah, blah. So this, is basic things you can do with Markdown. You can go, um, you can do advanced, um, advanced um, feature. You can use advanced features like checkboxing. You can use advanced features like drop downs in Markdown. You, this is just list, list your H1 tag, a table. You can do a table with Markdown. You can do, um, you can build, put your image in a Markdown where you have your title instead of using an A tag. Uh, you can put a link in markdown, in markdown where you have your brackets, your parentheses, then your brackets and so So those are some of the basic features we have with markdown. You can do advanced stuff with markdown. Yeah, so thank you for that. Link, you know? Yeah, thank you for that answer. So we'll be rounding up in by 12. But before I round up, I just have one last question. So I just want to ask you, um, do you have experience using markdowns um, in open source like project open source tools like how what does that process looks like in open source tools when you are when you are using markdown is there like is there a different way like is there a generic um rule to working with Markdown like in a team or in an open source environment. Do you have any experience in that kind of setting? Okay, yes, I do. Um, so I've attended at hackathons. Um, I, I've attended um, Gitcoin hackathons, consensus hackathons, and um, basically you are told to set me. Most of the time is setting up, most of the time your entry into documentation is read me. So, you need to know how to use Markdown to format your doc, your doc, um, your setup, your doc, your um, intro to your docs properly. So that's where you really work with open source documents in the README part. And um, um, yeah, so when I took part in the hackathon, I uh, we, there, there's a, there was a particular set, set of instructions that was given on how to set up our documentation, set up the README and uh, put links, add your teammates and stuff. So it, everything is basically done with Markdown. So you, that is why we need to know this language because um, it will really help you as a technical writer and in open source, because most of, like, we, like Rufai said, most of the documentation you see is in Markdown. So if you don't know how to properly format your readme, your, uh, your documentation, your GitHub uh, repo, people cannot get started with your documentation. So you have to um, give your readme a proper title, um, how people can get started setting up their documentation and stuff and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's why we need to use, um, need to know Markdown so that we can easily get started in open source um, documentation and navigate our way through it. Okay. Thank you for very much for today's session. Um, we will be rounding up in the next five or so minutes. If you need to follow our speaker for today, you can find her on Twitter and Instagram. You can also check the chat session for our GitHub repo. Let me reshare it so that you can find her in the, in the chat session and follow our work. So to summarize what we have been able to achieve today, 
we were able to talk about markdowns and we went on to talk about how to use Jekyll to set up a static site. We were able to set up the environment for the static site. I have also myself cloned the static site to see to see how it works. So if you look at here, you can see my own terminal. I was able to also clone the site. So you can also try to clone the site on your end and set up your own environment. If you want to follow or need this slide, we will share it in our group. So don't forget to follow us in our group or we are also on, we ourselves, Ride the Dogs Nigeria, we are on Twitter. So don't forget to follow us on Twitter and see and, and see the latest updates we have for you. I would like to tell everybody that um, we now we will now be hosting two events every month. So on the first Saturday of the month and on the last Saturday and the third Saturday of the month. So like now, this is April and this is the first Saturday of the month. We are hosting an event. Then the next event we'll be having is in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time, that is the third Saturday of the month, and we would we would we would be hosting a new set of speakers. So the way we have organized it is that the first Saturday of the month will be for local speakers in Nigeria, in Africa, that have something to share that we want to that we want to hear about the work they are doing and how they are doing it. So the third Saturday of the month, which is two weeks time, we will be hosting global speakers. We'll be hosting speakers that are non-Nigerians. That's what I mean by global speakers, non-Nigerians, non-Africans. We want to hear about how they are also building products and how they are documenting those products, right? So that is our plan for the next few months. We hope that by doing this, we can be able to cover a lot of ground and be able to provide value to the community. Please, if you have friends that are interested in technical writing, that are new to technical writing, kindly tell them about our event and about our community. You can find out on, is on Twitter at write the docs. So, ng docs that is our twitter andrew at ng docs just find us on twitter and you will be able to share more about our events to you we are also on whatsapp so if you connect with us on instagram on twitter we'll be able to share our whatsapp link with you um if your man has a question please go ahead if your man yeah good morning guys so good my morning. question is um Sorry, this is a bit noisy. So my question is, aside um, writing documentations or maybe writing article as article as a technical writer, so I would love to know, I'm, I'm, I think my question is going direct to of my career. So I want to know other things that technical writers do, aside maybe writing article or maybe putting up documentation. So that's my question. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you for that. That's a very important question. So as a technical writer, you can, um, you can also work as a content developer. You can um, create um, um, technical content. You can also, what is in, in um, can I say in Vogue or what is rather coming up um, rapidly is um, API docs. So um, the job description api documentation it's really it's really you can work as a, an api writer you can write apis you can um work as a content developer you can work as a documentation engineer and um yeah so those are recently i had an opportunity to recommend somebody um a technical writer that's um, from a company asked me to recommend someone um for to because they basically they didn't have a documentation. They didn't have any documentation and they wanted somebody that could come up um, come up with um, um, creating the APIs and uh, setting up everything. So I, I looked and I couldn't, because most of the time what we see is um, software developers and technical writers in one 
job um this is so and most of the time it's only articles um we write most of us are not in depth into um technical writing most of us know the editing part of technical writing there is also you can also work as you can also edit documentation and one important point thank god you raised this question is that um technical need to know how to code or at least understand code because if you don't know how, if you don't understand code you won't be able to translate code into um, documentation you won't be able to explain a line of code so you need to also know how to um, read code very important because facebook google they require you to know how to read code and for you to know how to read code you need to know how to write code at least to an extent so i i didn't get to i didn't know who among my cycle uh, um, who knows how to get a documentation site up from scratch so it was really difficult finding such technical writers so that's why i i really i'm really appreciative of this topic and technical writers can go in depth to know that they can do much more than writing articles so you can edit content you can serve as content editor you can um, serve as content developer you can serve as um, api writer a documentation engineer so those are the various there are different few and uh, what um, what you can do for example a company i you to be a technical writer in um, in uh, um in on facebook in facebook for example and if you don't know how to write if you don't know how to read code you might just fall under editing parts so that's why you need to know your onions as a technical writer because you might be called you might be employed somewhere as a technical writer and if they find out that you don't know how to you don't understand code you might you might not be able to explain much or you might not be able to write articles as they want to and you might basically fall under the editing editing aspect of technical writing so in order to avoid being a, just a, a, an editor of documentation you can work work on yourself and work to read to be able to read and understand code so that you can really you can easily set up um, you can easily explain APIs and be easily, easily be able to come up with articles for your company. So that's why you need to know how to read code as a technical writer. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, Rufai, you are muted. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So to, to add to that answer, right, Infioma, so one thing I believe is important is how the team is set up, right? So from my experience, me personally, I have a technical background, so I can work with APIs, I can work with um, some of those technologies that software engineers use, but there are some, there are some domains that you are brought in to come and document, or you may not necessarily have the technical expertise in that in that domain. So, example, if you if you are brought into a um, a team that is docu that is working on a blockchain, or that is working on cryptocurrency, or that is working on AI, will you need to go and learn about blockchain cryptocurrency before you go and, before you can start documenting their work? So that is why I feel the team and how 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 easy it is to approach the domain expert in your team is is exactly. important so, so yes, if so, somebody is very sorry. knowledgeable in your team yeah flow flow sorry for cutting in um for example for me as a technical content developer at RSK, what i do is i work with software developers i work with product owners so the product owners for my for my team for my company structure the product owners write this documentation and it's been handed over to us the technical writer, the technical writing team, also known as the developer experience. So we structure the documentation. We structure it into looking at, okay, this is this goes into user guides, this goes into tutorials, this goes into APIs and stuff. So that's mostly what you'll be doing, especially for technical writers that are in um, companies that are structured. So like Rufai said, you are going to work with developers. That's not, that you don't need to understand the code. What I mean is, for example, um, um, last year I, I had to write full stack develop full stack dApps built on RSK. I had to work on that, and because I knew I knew Solidity, and next I knew because I started with development before I fully um, um, immersed technical writing. I knew a little bit of Solidity, so 
for me to have, be able to write full stack dApps, full stack dApps built on RSK, um, I'm using a voting application. I needed to know how to start a node. I needed to know how to to um, to read at least a little bit of Solidity code. I needed to know some. So that's what I mean by being able to read code because the developer can hand over the documentation to you, and you'll be able to you you are the you that you are the technical writer and you will be the one to translate the documentation. So if the developer, the development team hands over a documentation to you and you cannot see, um, you cannot see errors in that documentation. For example, there is maybe, there is, a, there is no double quote inside the API. How do you know as a technical writer, you don't know how to run that code in your terminal? So that's what I mean by being able to, so you might not necessarily know blockchain, you might not necessarily know the core tools, but if documentation is handed over to you, you need to know how to use it because when you are when you are using documentation from beginning to end, you as a technical writer will need to test that documentation before you know how to organize it and for your users and structure it for your users. So you need to do these basic things as a technical writer. Okay, so thank you very much. We are just above our time. Thank you everyone for your presence today. We appreciate our speaker and we are very grateful that you are able to make it with us today. For our participants who are joining, who joined us today, we thank you for providing the time and making time for this session. We are, I would like to apologize for the initial noise that we were getting in the background and the people that were disturbing us. We will try to make it better over the next session. So with that, we will be able to be rounding up our session hello. for today. Hi, Joy. Yeah, hello everyone. So I put my hands hello, up. Joy. I wanted to hello. ask a question. Okay, flow, flow, flow. Okay, um, thank you, um, Owens, for your session. It was really informative because I've heard about um, in the JQ, but I've never really had to use it at any point. So my question is, you know, you mentioned that you came, you started from, you know, development and then you got into technical writing and now you're writing the documentations at the company you're working. So I want to ask, like, on a personal level, like, how does, how does one actually, you know, get started with, you know, writing documentation? Because, Writing documentation, sometimes I feel like maybe it's when you work on, you know, big projects or you're actually working at a company and there yeah, you want to like, um, you know, make the information about the maybe product accessible to users. So maybe someone who is just, you know, taking up that career path as, you know, um, technical rights and I want to delve into documentation, what do you actually recommend the person starts with? Is it like, you know, taking courses that the person has to, you know, learn about the documentation or like, what would you recommend as the, you know, actual path or means okay. to follow? Okay, thank you very much. That question is very important. Um, when people ask me what I am, how, did, how they um, need to get started in technical writing, I usually refer them to the Google Technical Writer course. And um, apart from that, I, also want, I also ask if they have been um, if they have knowledge of um, software development, at least not HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, because um, um, for you to be a technical writer that is will be valued, you need to read know how to read code. So I ask them, do you are you coming from a development background? Because the world is changing, and uh, we we can see we can see more software developers handling technical writing roles. So as a technical writer, how do you differentiate yourself? You need to differentiate yourself by also knowing how to what to write code and read code. That's how you'll be valued in the company. So I refer them to the Google Technical Writer course. If, if you search on um, Google, you see the technical writing course, which can help you to know how to structure your sentences, um, um, structure your grammar and stuff. So that helps you as a beginner first. Then I also, um, I'm also concerned about people um, starting their, um, their career in technical writing from a development background because it's, it will be very easier for, for um, um, people coming from that background. And the way, we, the way tech is, if you can all agree with me, the way tech is, if you don't have this basic understanding, 
for example, product managers, um, UI designers also need to know how to understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Can, do, do you agree with me? Because this will be applied, this will be applied in um, what they do. So as a technical writer that doesn't know um, the basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I won't know how to um, um, structure my documentation for um, what developers might want. You have, remember, as a technical writer, you are writing for developers. Developers are your users. So how can this documentation easily get them started with, um, for example, um, which API should I mention? For example, Flutter Wave API. As a technical writer working on Flutter Wave APIs, writing about Flutter Wave APIs, how do I structure my documentation for to enable developers easily get started? So that's it. So I'm concerned about um, Joy. I'm concerned about the their background, and I always refer them to go and understand, um, go and understand code because it's very important if you want to. There are technical writers, mind you. There are technical writers who don't code, mind you. But to be able to progress in this 20, 2021 and beyond, you need to know how to write, to read, at least even though you don't know how to write, you need to know how to read code, know how to read, um, um, know how to structure your code, read the code and stuff. So that's the part that I advise for people to follow. Go to the to go technical writing course, at least get running, starting, start writing code. Also, um, you can get started, um, for example, um, if you if you visit the open source sites, you can start your um, learning. You can start your technical writing by explaining. Look at documentation. Try to explain what this documentation does. Um, if you are if you are if you are just starting in the development, start writing about um, how to do pagination in HTML. How to do pagination is in your site. So all those things helps you um, to develop your technical writing skills and to know that you are writing for people. It's very important. Know that you're writing for people and know your audience because your audience are developers. So developers are, when developers visit the documentation, what are they looking for? They're looking for how they can start, easily start their, their um, journey. So if they are, if they are, if you're telling them to run a node, how do you structure the node to enable them to get started very early? There are very good sites that are recommended for documentation like Twilio. Twilio, um, if you go the onboarding experience for developers is very, very, the quick start is very, very uh, minimal. Um, you can go to Twilio, study their documentation site, see how they organize their documentation, so that when you get jobs that enables you, that needs you to handle developer portals, that needs you to handle documentation, you will know how to get started and it will be easier for you as a technical writer. Yeah, so that's it, Joy. Um, starting with development, um, start by translating your, doc, your, um, your, your own personal sites, your personal um, learning, start by documenting them, putting it on Medium. Um, also, there are sites that will enable you to learn, to learn how to, um, to earn money from your writing. So those little, little, whatever you learn, put it on Medium, whatever you learn, um, uh, whatever API you come across and you are just starting in development, see how you can explain it to an audience and help them to get started. So those are the career paths that I advise for the new, newbies in technical writing to follow. Yes, thank you very much for, for those tips. So I will just add that um, for Joy, I will say, look at the links. So she mentioned some links. I have posted them on, on our chat session. So just copy them and follow those links. You will be able to follow the Google Technical Writing course, try to complete that. Another thing is, if you are going to be writing a documentation, if you want experience in a documentation, talk to the people that are going to be using that documentation. So, and then you, you'll be able to get an idea of what is the problem they are having. And then you will know how to approach that problem and how to solve that problem. Do you get? So does any other person have anything to say before we round up for today? Okay. In the absence of any further conversation, I would like to close this session for today. Thank you, our speaker. Thank you to the participants. Please tell others about our event. We will be hosting our next event in two weeks time, upper Saturday. We hope everybody will be available. Please, if you need to contact us, we are on um, Twitter at ngdocs. ngdocs, you'll find us on Twitter. Thank you very much for today's session. 
and we are done for today. Bye. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye guys. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.